Redditors who have served in submarines, what is something not many people know about being inside one? Familygrams back in the 80s, yes, before the internet, Twitter, and email. The only communication from the outside world were messages called familygrams. They were messages from your family slash friends with a total of 40 characters, including spaces, sent to you. My wife developed her own style of acronyms to squeeze as much information into those 80 character messages. If the messages included serious or personal info or were too encrypted, the Navy would reject and not send them. Example, EV1, well kids, and sports, WMSU, ILY, wife, means everyone is doing well. The kids are enjoying their sports. We miss you. I love you. Wife's first name. We were allowed eight of these messages during a single deployment. They don't sound like much, but when you're under the water for months at a time, they are priceless. Edit, my wife informed me they were 80 characters, not 40. Memory is the second thing that goes. I was on a submarine for a week or so for an exercise. What I remember? 1. Lobster. Lots of lobster. We ate really well on board. 2. I was given a top bunk that had a big pipe running lengthwise over the bed and very close to it. I had to slide into the bed under the pipe, and in order to turn over, I would have to climb out of bed and back into it again. Three, part of the exercise involved going to test depth, which was pretty deep, thousands of feet maybe? As we dove deeper, the titanium steel hull made popping and cracking noises, and it was disconcerting. The captain was nervous during the whole dive, and that didn't make any of us feel much better. Four, as a visitor, I got to go up on the bridge while we were traveling out to sea, and it was as cool as they say. I felt like I was in a war movie. 5. The parents was in Norfolk and my parents lived close by, so my dad picked me up when we returned. He had also been in the Navy and wanted to see a modern sub. All he could talk about on the way home was how much I smelled like a mean. 6. The officers were run ragged and you could tell it wore them down. That said, the camaraderie was better than on the surface ships I had been stationed on. Do they have spiders in the subs? Blowing the crapper on yourself. 616 class sailor here. When the sanitary tank was full, the auxiliary man on watch would secure the heads to pressurize the sanitary tank to above sea pressure, negative 75 psi, to empty it out. During that time, any crew member not fully in possession of their senses might occasionally stumble into the head, take a leak or dump, and flush. The flushing valve was a 3-4 inch ball valve that connected the toilet bowl directly to the sanitary tank directly below. This would vent the pressurized air in the tank below into the compartment covering the newly awakened soldier in his own excrement. Everyone up forward on the ship would hear this. Of course, the poor victim would have to clean the whole mess up. On hump night, halfway through the patrol, the sailor who did the best job would be awarded the Golden Crapper Award. A toilet seat painted gold. I remember one guy talking about getting crap out from under his eyelids. Didn't serve, but have worked on them. If you're on board as a guest while underway and they run out of beds, they throw mattresses on the torpedo racks for you to sleep on. Also, every torpedo tube has a woman's name. There's always a constant background noise slash vibration when the ship is underway due to fans and equipment running. It becomes such a constant background that minor changes can tell you about what's going on with the ship. One of the first indications of a major problem is the sound of the fans coasting down after they've been tripped off. I once woke from a dead sleep to find myself dressed and running toward the engine room where I worked because I subconsciously heard all of the fans near my bunk drop off. No thought, no processing, just pure instinct and muscle memory. Oh crap, the fans died, there must be a problem, report to engine room to fix it. Submarine days are only 18 hours long, so sometimes you're eating spaghetti for breakfast and omelets for dinner. We mess with the percent of O2 in the air. I can sleep with the ship going up, down, and rolling on the surface, but so help me God, if the reactor screams and my rack fans stop, I'm usually awake before the announcement and heading aft. Corn dogs and hamsters, chicken cordon bleu, make the best meal. If you're a nub, you best bring treats for checkouts. Candy is fine, Red Bull for the difficult ones. Even if you don't chew, bring a dip. It builds goodwill. Last but not least, Down Periscope is the most accurate submarine movie. Served in a Los Angeles class, there are no windows and only a couple people get to use the periscope, so I sometimes tell people that the longest I went without seeing the sun was 52 days. I'm sure there are others who have gone longer. My father was on subs for 19 years, plank owner on the Richard B. Russell. He told me that steam leaks are no joke, and they'd have to walk down hallways with a broomstick moving up and down to detect where it was at. Once the leak was found, it would cut the broomstick handle in pieces as it waved through it. He was a third-generation Navy, I was fourth, and my son is now fifth in boot camp currently. 
If you're tall, forget about running on the treadmill unless you want to run bent over and wind up with spinal problems. My dad served as a quartermaster on a nuclear sub. He did have one crazy story. Apparently, they were at port somewhere in Southeast Asia. Well, they hang around, leave, etc. Everything seems fine. Well, it turns out one of the submariners had killed a lady while they were on the mainland. Higher-ups found out on the sub while at sea. So they had to keep everything under wraps for the sake of crew integrity, and nobody was made aware till safely at port, once done doing patrol or whatever. So that whole time, they just hung around and worked with the murderer. Pretty nuts. My dad's story. He served on the USS Kentucky way back when, and due to some logistics error, all they had to eat was basically beef stroganoff. He's like, all right, it's not that bad, I can live with this. But when you're on a sub and you're cramped, tempers run wild. They start fighting with the metal knives and forks, so Command takes them away and gives them plastic knives and forks. Fighting stops for a bit, but the tempers flare and they fight with the plastic, so Command takes them away and had them plastic spoons to eat beef stroganoff with. By this time, my dad is sick of this crap. People start fighting again, though, and my poor E3 dad wasn't about that life, but Command was like, yeah, so you guys have to eat with your hands now. It's been around 30 years, and he refuses to even smell beef stroganoff. Last time we made it was in 2013, and we were on vacation. He came into the house, looked at us eating the stroganoff, and said, I'm ordering pizza for me. Good times. I am the reason that e-cigs are not allowed on U.S. submarines anymore. When you first arrived at the boat as a new underway buddy, you get to do what they call cranking. You clean all the dishes and galley equipment. Also, you get to be the one who takes all the trash on board and smashes it in a hydraulic press to make these nice little cans to save space. So here I come, smashing trash like a good noob. I put an armful of trash into the smasher, pull the valve, and then turn around to grab another handful. I hear a pop and then a constant hiss, so I turn around and the entire trash compactor is a ball of fire. 30 minutes of firefighting later, they come to find out that some effing mouth breather had put an e-cig battery into the trash, and I smashed the F out of it. Lipo batteries don't like that, so it blew up. Several weeks later, no more e-cigs on boats. You're welcome, guys. Also, this happened on halfway night for those of you who know what that is. When a 1MC came over about a fire from the TDU, everyone thought it was a joke. Everyone will tell you their job is boring, from the guy steering the sub to the dude operating the nuclear reactor. We also joke way too much about our wives cheating on us and wanting to kill ourselves. It takes a special person to understand our humor. When we finished up in the shipyard and took the sub out for the first time after being cut up and torn apart, we would read detailed reports of other subs lost at sea. We even went as far as to write down who would play us in a movie in the event we sunk. Ohio class sailor here. You get so bored out there, you do some weird crap. One time we wondered how much semen was discharged overboard during a patrol. So, quasi-scientifically, we measured the volume of one guy's load, did a survey of the crew to find out how often they jacked off, and did the calculation. Wish I could remember the number. I was a lovemaker, heartbreaker, submarine communicator in the Royal Navy's Trafalgar class. Three main smells that stick with me. One, men. Men stink. Two, marine diesel. It makes you smell for days, if not weeks. Three, reactor air. A strange metallic smell that sticks to your skin and clothes. Sometimes it'll randomly come back to me. And when you come home, women smell divine, if not slightly overpowering. Also, my good friends in USN can't drink or fight to save their lives. Bless them. Peace. Served on a Virginia class, the best way I can describe the smell is that of a dirty McDonald's. It's due to the CO2 absorbent. We all go nose blind to it in a few days, but the smell gets into our clothes real bad. The airflow is actually really good. There are fans that keep everything circulating. Five-minute showers are a thing. The reason is creating potable water is a slow, somewhat noisy process. The other reason is that discharging dirty water is also a noisy event. Our only communication with the outside world is through email. There is no internet access. The ship periodically downloads everything, then distributes it. Upsetting emails are withheld until the boat comes into port so the sailor can continue to function until it is possible to get a flight home. When the boat is on mission, where stealth is mandatory, there might not be any communication at all for over a month. On a Virginia-class submarine, a five-minute shower is turn water on to get wet, turn water off, lather up with soap, turn water on, rinse soap off, turn water off, then squeegee all four walls. 
No one was ever in a rush when the water was off or squeegeeing the walls. Yes, radio screened our email. Served in a Los Angeles class. Most people are on an 18-hour day, so you're on watch for six hours, meaning doing your primary job, off watch for six hours, meaning doing all the other crap you have to do, and ideally sleeping for six hours. In reality, though, you rarely get to sleep for six hours. Your off-watch work often runs over, the on-watch dude has to take a crap so you have to take over until he gets back, though you'll make him pay for that another time, and the submarine runs drills that involve the whole crew almost every day, so if it happens while you're supposed to be sleeping, you can sleep when you're dead. Also, we had pizza night once a week. You have to find a buddy who would eat the same toppings and call up to the crew's mess at least 30 minutes before you got off watch, but it was pretty nice. I didn't serve, but I tuned the turbine generators on Virginia-class subs for the contractor who built them. The color was surprising to me. Key lime pie green. Everywhere. I guess they did a study to find out which color was least likely to drive people insane when confined for months in a steel can. And it made me wonder what would happen in a bright orange sub. Edit. The proper term is seafoam green. Thanks. Served on an Ohio class. You don't smell it down there, but the second you are back from deployment, you realize all your clothes have an off smell. You learn to recognize noises changing. If ventilation cuts off, you know something is wrong. Food can be incredible for what we are given, and it is one of the most morale-boosting things you can have. If the crew is sad or stressed, you'll most likely be getting chicken nuggets soon. Formality goes out the window. In most militaries, all officers and higher enlisted are greeted by ranks. Underwater, it's, sup bro, unless you're talking to the CO or XO. You only talk through email and it gets filtered. If someone in your family dies, you won't see that email until they can get you off the submarine. Your significant other sends a horny email? The radio man saw it. My dad served on the NR1 in the 90s. Super tiny nuclear sub. He said that before they'd deploy, they'd go on grocery runs and load up with packs of purple Kool-Aid powder and Doritos and ice cream bars for days. Then they were so bored they'd have competitions to see who could drink enough purple Kool-Aid to turn their crap green first. I also heard stories of having to dig a cherry out of a very hairy guy's belly button. Clearly they were busy. Okay, smell. I was in 1962 to 1970, two World War II era diesel boats, two nukes. The diesel boats, no showers or laundry at sea. Working uniforms rotten from battery fumes. Sailors have been smoking, farting, cooking, and sweating through World War II, depth charging Korean War, and Cold War. Blue sanitaries every night and vented inboard. So a sailor tells the COB he wants to bring his pet skunk on board. COB says, no way, what about the smell? Sailor says, He'll get used to it. We did. My dad was an architect slash engineer for a company that built nuclear submarines and went out on the sea trials several times over his career. Said that the food was pretty good. Was one of the only ways to boost morale versus not having exposure to the outside. Being six foot five, he said that in retrospect, he didn't pay enough attention to designing the ships for people his height. An eight-year-old can roll off the top of a triple bunk in his sleep and be okay, because that's only a four-foot drop. For longer deployments, space is extra tight because of all the provisions you have to take. So they will stack cans of foods in berthing areas and put rubber mats over them. You're walking on cans for weeks at a time. Also, I haven't gone through all the comments, so I'm not sure if it's mentioned anywhere yet. Sometimes a sailor will have a hot rack. One rack, i.e. better bunk, for two sailors. When you're working 12-hour shifts, you can get away with it. I did two submarine deployments where I had to hot rack. Both times, we would make it work by one of us using a sleeping bag and the other one sleeping under the sheets so we weren't smelling each other's sweat. Good times. I served in a sturgeon class in the early to mid-90s. It's not as claustrophobic as it seems. You just sort of get used to it. It's extremely still since there's no waves like on the surface and you're not going very fast at all. It feels like you're standing still most of the time. The food is good at the beginning of a deployment, but by the middle it has descended to five-year-old cans of three-bean salad. It is relatively unmilitaristic. We took our job seriously, but they had to remind us not to refer to the officers by their first names. You could be brushing your teeth in the morning while someone was two feet behind you having crap. I miss those days. This is one of the most interesting Reddit threads I've ever seen. Nice try, Russia. Loose lips. My dad was in New York City long ago. He said when the crews began, they walked around on large cans of food that were laid out on the floors. As the crews went on, they ate the floor. Beginning of the cruise, people were hunched over, end of the cruise, walking a little taller. <laughs> they are not 100% watertight. Getting rid of unwanted water is a constant effort. I always kept one uniform clean for pulling into port. 
It smelled nice and clean when I put it on. After tying up and going topside, it smelled like a submarine, not fresh at all. The drinking water never seemed to quench my thirst. We had an air conditioner the size of a large refrigerator that ran on steam, cooled better than reciprocating systems, and was nearly silent. The lack of sunlight makes even small cuts and scrapes take forever to heal. I remember trying to slide while playing softball and getting some road rash on my arm right before we went out for a few weeks. What was originally just some missing skin turned into a nasty, thick scab that just wouldn't go away. I think it's the lack of vitamin D your body produces from sunlight. Socks in the bilges. If you're new or if it was field day, hours of cleaning, you would find random non-matching socks in the bilge. 120 guys go to the sea, not a lot around to catch bodily fluids that are not snot. Sometimes said socks would fall out of the outer racks and go to the bottom of the bilge. Grandpa was on the Nautilus. Never asked him about it, sadly. Have his tiny, tiny stainless steel personal effects box, earplug inserter, mouth guard, tie bar from Hawaii. Also have a set of keys with tags labeled electrical room. If I ever make it to the museum, I'm going to ask if I can use the keys. Didn't serve in one, but I visited many older ones from World War II. They all had just one toilet. For up to 40 men, imagine the stench in the morning. If you are in charge of the kitchen, never run out of coffee. You will be demoted. If there is the slightest chance of the mission time running long, plan for it. Russian submarine captains have Scottish accents. Fact. Ohio class here. Time goes quickly. Drills six days a week and constant training. Nuke ET here. Those months flew by. Also, you develop a closeness with guys that you don't get in a lot of places. Underway, my watchmate was almost an enemy. On shore, he's my best friend. You don't find another place where you trust everyone else with your life like that. A friend of mine was on a U.S. sub for a while. The most notable story was that they would get so bored that they would guess combo locks that contained something sensitive. Maybe a gun locker or codes, I don't recall. They would then leave notes for the officer. When found, the officer would throw a fit and set a new combo. Then they start over at 000. zero, zero. Not 100% sure if true, but interesting anyway. My dad was on a diesel boat in the 60s. One toilet for all enlisted men, only one shower a week unless you were the cook. Making water was much harder without a reactor. Everyone smoked like chimneys. The smell was not of this world. So in the movies, just about every time they show a submarine, they have sound effects of a continuous ping? Yeah, that doesn't really exist. It's supposed to be a fathometer, but they haven't made a noise like that since World War II. The fathometers are in the higher spectrum, and even the non-secure modes on them, which are in the human ear spectrum, don't sound like that. Los Angeles-class Submariner here. Every part of the atmosphere is tightly controlled. Air, water, food, etc. It's not uncommon for the oxygen level to be kept shockingly low. There's less of a fire risk if there's barely enough oxygen to light a match, and nothing is scarier than a fire on a submarine. When it's time for the whole crew to spend a few hours cleaning the ship, they turn the oxygen up and suddenly everyone has a whole lot more energy. After months on patrol, your eyes don't focus so well on distant objects after not needing to focus on much beyond 20 feet for a while after patrol. There is one medical provider for the entire boat. He, she is not a doctor and considering the lack of internet or a phone to call for help, has to rely solely on books and training and hope it's right. If a crew member gets seriously injured and needs to be evacuated off, it can take days to a week to get them off, and this one guy is left to try to sustain someone with limited resources. I was ETV-2SS on USS West Virginia. Once submerged, a submarine is just as smooth as sitting in your home. Except your house may randomly pitch up or down while sleeping or eating. The worst I have ever experienced was taking 10-degree rolls at 500 feet under a hurricane. Served on an SSBN from 2013 to 2017. The outboards of Machinery 1 is a good spot to get some shut-eye on field day. To be a bit more serious, I was a sonar tech and shrimp sound like hundreds of people snapping their fingers constantly. Dolphins are annoying and will drive you to extreme anger. The sonar shack is a safe haven and you should feel bad for sonar techs who don't get their own shack on some subs. Smokeless tobacco products and energy drinks can help you get a lot of signatures during qualifications. Nukes are almost universally weird dudes. There is a reason the term you're nuking it exists. Edit. Also, while I can't prove this, I swear that the Commander Triad would have the oxygen pumped up on field day underway in order to get more cleaning out of us. It's like a long bus ride with no windows. You're constantly sleep-deprived and have 8-plus hours of watch a day, then you start your actual job. 
There aren't enough people to manage all of the programs and requirements, so you're going to have multiple collateral duties on top of your job slash title. You will never be around a more intelligent and capable group of people than on a submarine. Not totally about being in one, my brother is a geologist and once went down in Alvin, a deep ocean submersible. One thing they let the visiting scientists do is take a styrofoam cup and draw slash write a message on it. They then put them in a cage attached to the outside of the sub. Due to the equal pressure of the water on all sides, the large cup compresses to about the size of a thimble, and your picture in it, perfectly proportional. Some guy at a party told me he served on one, and he said the creaking noises when they went down deep was always unsettling. My uncle helped design the Seawolf-class submarine, primarily the electronics and the bridge computer systems. He was present during a test which included a mixture of experienced submariners, other Navy, and some civilian contractors. Not long into the test run, there was a loud bang, and a civilian was found in one of the toilets covered in his own crap. Apparently, the toilets on the sub have many valves, and this guy reversed the process and blew the contents out of the bowl rather than suck it down. Never stationed on one, but worked slash friends with many a submariner. One of the craziest things to me was hearing that cuts don't heal. The oxygen content on subs is artificially lower to help prevent fires, but this makes it hard for your skin to heal. Pulling the Not My Story card here, my dad served on a sub in the early 90s, and there are only a few stories that I have heard since he said it was just a job to him and not much interesting happened while he served. Sleeping quarters are tight, and you would share a bunk where you slept in shifts. Sometimes as a joke, someone would take the mattress and throw it into the freezer before putting it back on the bed for the next guy. He also said that it was really easy to lose track of time and said that his days operated around meal times. Breakfast for dinner would always throw him off. Used to dive off subs fairly often. Some takeaways? You can't get the smell out. Ever. Four meals a day is pretty nice. There are attachment points at the top of missile tubes where you can hang a pull-up bar. But then you're dangling 40 inches up doing pull-ups and the heat rises so the tubes are sweat boxes. Since subs of the same class are basically identical inside, time doesn't reset. If you do a week on board, then leave for a month, and then come back, it feels like day eight, not day one. They roll a lot more in real life than they do in the movies. If you remove the faceplates to the switches and under the gauges and some control panels in the sub, you will find writings left from other submariners. An actual subsailor here, back in the late 90s. The weirdest thing to me was at first was, we've been underwater for weeks, why are we sweeping up so much dust when we clean? That's when I learned that humans are always shedding skin particles. It freaked me out. Not a submariner, but did some closed environment studies with NASA. Question to the submariners, how do you handle flatulence? I assume they don't give you gas-reducing meals. My dad served on one in the late 70s and early 80s. He said that the sun feels weird when you return to the surface. Los Angeles class. You get bored underway. Then someone gets a bright idea, and before you know it, you're going through berthing with the thermal imager from the firefighting kit to see who's jerking it and hitting their rack curtain to add a little extra something to their self-pleasure experience. And then you learn that one guy is extra flexible. My grandfather served on what he called a crash boat in World War II. He was French-Canadian but was serving in the U.S. Navy. One night his ship put into port in England. Him and shipmates passed out chocolate to the English kids, then went out looking for diversions. My grandpa ran into the French submariners, who upon learning he spoke French, immediately took him back to the submarine to get effing drunk AF. It was grandpa's favorite war story. Sturgeon and Ohio-class sailor here. On the Sturgeon-class boat, we tied a rope tight athwart ship from side to side across the middle before diving, and at test depth, it dropped a couple of feet. Never noticed how much the boat compressed before that. Never served on a sub, but have lots of nuke friends who all said, hot racking. Some guy hops in the bed after you wake up and you catch him when it's your turn in bed. Is still a thing. Edit. You slash Drunk Jason says you had three guys to two racks, so every other time it would be unused for a while. Didn't serve, but helped to build them. Word on the street is some mariners have the best food in the Navy, for obvious reasons, morale, etc. Ohio-class submariner here, you see a lot of Ds. 18-hour days, three six-hour watches for enlisted jobs. Get up and go upstairs to drive at 6 a.m. Got off at noon, start again at midnight. So do you try to sleep before midnight or not? Some guys settled in to work 6, up 12, work 6, sleep 12, but I couldn't do it. Life underway became an endless horror of sleep deprivation, drills, field days, and more sleep deprivation. 
Haven't read all the comments, but submarines handle like airplanes in a lot of ways. You have the same forces acting on the hull. Oh, and shrimp go crazy when you blow the sand tanks. To quote a buddy who served, sometimes late at night, if you listen closely, you can hear the sound of a hundred lonely sailors fapping away. Served on a Los Angeles class sub. Just about everything that can be painted is painted seafoam green because it's supposedly a calming color. And surprisingly, not a lot of people know this. But there's a giant uranium reactor in the middle of every U.S. submarine which is operated by guys who are mostly 20 to 24 years old. I was operating a fully functional reactor when I was 21. You can hear whales singing while you sleep since your head is next to the hull of the ship. Served in a Baleo class. When we did test dives to like 300 feet, the water pressure would literally squeeze the hull together a bit. You could tie a tight string across a hallway and by the time you pass the thermal layer, that straight string would be dipping about a foot. Awful creaking noises too. A constant reminder that the only thing standing between you and certain death was an inch of steel made by the lowest bidder. Hung out with a lot of guys that weren't in Virginia class, lived in Connecticut, and they were in Groton. They said sub guys are the best because they really, really screen them all first for emotional stability and things like that. Went on a tour of the sub and it was pretty cool. They said we were in the safest place in the world. To keep people from being scared, the torpedo room is where they work out because it's the only place with enough space. If someone asks a question about how far slash deep slash etc the sub could go, they weren't allowed to answer. Apparently, there's an underwater equivalent to the Mile High Club, but it's pretty tough because most partners don't get to go on the sub when it is underway as a visitor. Most guys said they'd be fine with having women on board, but logistically it'd be hard if the women needed a separate bathroom slash sleeping quarters. They said there were some gay guys on the crew and no one had a problem with it. Stayed in contact for a little while when they went underway, they went to the North Pole. I think they all drink beer when they are there. And through the Panama Canal. Commander said that is pretty nerve-wracking, on their way to Pearl Harbor. I have a funny story about this. I didn't serve or serve on a sub, but my dad was on a nuclear sub in the 80s. When I was in elementary school, he explained to me the bottom of the ocean was so dark because light bulbs absorb darkness, which is how they make it bright. And when they dump the burned out bulbs off the sub, they go to the bottom of the ocean and break open, obviously letting all the darkness back out. I went and excitedly told my whole class about this and was laughed at mercilessly. I came home and told my dad and he was on the floor laughing. You will hate a lot of the men on board, but if one of them called you at 3 a.m. for help, you would do it without question. Yes, I know women are on the boats now and I'm glad for it. My point of reference is rather dated. It is as small as you think, but does not feel that way. When your entire world is the inside of that steel tube, your north pole is the front of the boat and your south pole is the aft end. It's still small, but it becomes bigger when that hatch shuts. U.S. Charlotte, SSN 766. Bromine is in the water supply. Obligatory, not a submariner, just raised by one, disclaimer. My dad did a bit of a sneaky, borderline espionage stuff during the Cold War, and if word got out about even half of that crap that unofficially went down between their Navy and ours, there's no doubt in my mind we would have entered into a full-blown war with the Soviets. We're talking mysteriously sunken subs with no alibi, stolen intel, and creeping around enemy territory where you shouldn't be. Speaking of which, Dad's go-to story slash quote is, while off the coast of a certain country spying on the bad guys, as he called them, they suddenly heard a loud boom, almost sounding and feeling like a direct hit. The entire submarine shook, and as everyone scrambled into high alert mode, his CO goes, that son of a bee just dropped a depth charge on us. Hands on hips, shaking his head almost in amused disbelief like he was more impressed than scared. To this day, I'm pretty sure my dad is still impressed slash entertained by the memory of his reaction. In short, submarine warfare is almost exactly like the game Battleship, and we've all come a hell of a lot closer to nuclear war than we realize. Former Los Angeles-class sailor, all racks, beds on board have a thin curtain for privacy. If someone was watching a movie on their laptop while in the rack, their shadow would project onto the curtain. If someone was in the rack watching porn, we called it the puppet show. Edit. Spelling. A submarine is incredibly stable while submerged in a relatively calm sea. It honestly just feels like you are in a basement or something. Ships actually have a variable ballast system. 
The state of neutral buoyancy must be actively maintained by the crew to avoid becoming too light to dive or too heavy to maintain depth. At certain times of year and certain oceans, when the sub is running on the surface at night, it will distribute bioluminescent algae, creating a glowing wake around the ship. Super cool. 637 class in the 80s here. Yes, we all volunteered, and I'm positive we all had to fail the psych test to qualify. No sane person would want to do it and certainly not enjoy it. The most fun we had was messing with each other to see if they would go crazy. Also, it gets really freaking cold when you are in the very far north Pacific during the winter. The smell of baking bread around 4 a.m. was wonderful. Pizza nights on Saturdays was great. We had awesome cooks who would even make Navy food taste good, until you had to store wet trash in the freezer with the food. Then it all tastes like trash. My dad was actually in a sub in the middle of the Pacific when I was born, 2001. They would sometimes receive care packages without names and would auction them off without knowing the contents, like storage wars, but with packages. Once my dad's boss spent around $200 on a package that ended up containing Playboys and marshmallow fluff. A nuclear engineer friend who served five years once told me he will never eat coleslaw again. I asked why. He said to imagine 300 or so sailors all sick with food poisoning because of bad coleslaw at the same time in a sub. Enough said. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.